Have you ever wondered if your internet provider was ripping you off? Maybe you've thought about changing providers, but who would you even choose? Well, what if I told you that I've done all the work for you? That I've made the choice of who gives the best internet in Canada as simple as watching this video? Well, I've done just that because it's time for the Canadian internet provider playoffs. Yeah, I'll think of a better name before I actually shoot this intro. First things first, transparency. No, 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 not that kind of transparency. We need to thank the sponsor of today's video, Oxio. So, yes, Oxio is an internet provider. And yes, they have given us money to make this video, but they don't have any say in what goes into the video nor did they see this cut before the video was posted. So, uh, who knows? We may be alienating a potential sponsor right now. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thank you to Oxio for sponsoring this video at least, and also for being cool about trusting in their service, being able to stand on its own two feet. How is this whole thing going to work, I hear you ask? Well, we've identified a list of top providers across Canada which we'll be comparing based on their internet-only packages. We'll also only be including those providers who service more than one province, which means, as cool as Sastel is, it ain't making this list. <laughs> hey, 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 I don't make the rules. I mean, I guess I kind of do in this case, but... Anyways, we'll be judging our chosen providers on a few different categories. Number one, the amount of Canada that it covers. Number two, how easy it is to set up. Number three, what is the customer support like? And number four, what kind of internet packages they provide? And of course, the ever important price. We'll be ranking each of these four categories out of 10 so that in the end, we can see who will rise above to be the world champion of internet providers within Canada. So let's unpack it. First up, we have the formidable brand name, telecommunications giant, TELUS. TELUS is a big name in Canada, and you'll see them on sports arenas, cell phone plans, and even managing telehealth. They are big corporation personified, kind of like those B&L guys in Pixar. Now, the upside to all these stuffy suit wearing is that their coverage is coast to coast, even managing to cover some of none of it. So in terms of the amount of Canada that they service, they will be getting a solid 10 out of 10. When it comes to how easy TELUS is to set up though, well, the truth is I couldn't figure out how to actually set up TELUS for my apartment because it kept telling me that TELUS was not available in my apartment, despite the fact that TELUS have a box in my apartment. Whew. <laughs> I've tried to go through their website to figure out if I'm putting in the wrong information, which is very confusing to navigate by the way and I kept getting the same stupid message saying that it wasn't available in my area, even though I know that it is. I did try to call them, more on that in a second, but to no avail. So tell us, you get a big fat stinking one out of 10 for this, because I am willing to admit that there could possibly be some human error in this situation and I can't morally give you a zero. Remember when I said all of 20 seconds ago how I called TELUS to try and solve the problem, but I couldn't get through to an actual human? Sure, there are tons of ways to technically get through to a customer support section, but getting problems solved doesn't seem to be ideal. Here, instead, you get tickets or referral numbers and are told that an agent will address your issue in due course. As an aging millennial who has had their fair share of abandonment issues, their result is a pretty horrendous score of three out of 10. Three points for the variety of ways you can contact TELUS and minus seven points for how pointless contacting them actually seems to be. Finally, we get down to packages and price. And once again, this is where TELUS shines. From their pure fiber offering of up to three gigabytes all the way to their commitment to consistent bandwidth, which promises to give you the speeds you are paying for. I did find one package charging $60 per month for 50 megabytes download speed and another package around 80 to $90 a month for about 500 megabytes download speed. So uh, yeah, who knows what you're actually paying for. They seem to have very decent download speeds at relatively competitive prices though. And once again, 
all this may be a human error issue, so let's leave them at a safe 6 out of 10 on internet packages. Which means, after round 1, TELUS is our current winner. Standing at a 20 out of 40 score though, uh, not great, but hey, not the worst. So, Oxio. Oxio, Oxio, Oxio. First off, I know this isn't a category we are judging these providers on, but your website. Impeccable. After spending many, many, many days researching all these providers, your tagline of internet without all the teleco bull is a breath of fresh air, and might be the only time I get to curse on a Moving to Canada video. Not today. But we ain't judging you on your impeccable marketing team. We are, however, judging you on your coverage. So, what you got? Well, first off, Oxio is a third-party internet access, meaning that they do use other networks' infrastructure, but they seem to have made this work to their advantage as they have coverage across all the major Canadian cities, with a few holes in the Atlantic provinces. That being said, you can't get a full score if you got some holes, so we'll have to go with a 8 out of 10 for coverage. Now, for setting up, I am willing to admit that Oxio may have an unfair advantage here as I got to physically set up their product myself. But I honestly don't know how any of the other providers could have been easier. I signed up like a regular customer on their website, got sent a router in the mail, plugged it in and it worked. There was a tiny bit of confusion about whether a technician had to come around to my house to double check compatibility. Honestly though, it really wasn't needed. And I was up and running within three minutes. So yeah, while I feel you deserve a 10 out of 10, this is kind of relative grading and I can't give you a full score without having set up each provider. So let's settle on a solid 8 out of 10 here. Customer support though was the biggest surprise and biggest letdown for me when it came to Oxio. I am one of those weird millennials that would much prefer to talk on the phone to someone than send an email. But alas, Oxio doesn't offer it. Cue despair. Hello darkness my old friend. They do however offer customer support through their Instagram page which I genuinely thought would just be a gimmick, but was pleasantly surprised to find out that it is monitored by competent people who not only listened to my problem, but actually solved it for me. Like I told them my issue, they got in touch with the right department and got me an answer within five minutes. I have never, not once, seen a more efficient customer service in the year and a half I've lived in Canada. So you absolutely deserve the 10 out of 10 I am giving you for customer support, and also, my two thumbs up of approval to all the companies out there who want to see how customer support should be done. Finally, we have value. Now, Oxio are pretty open in saying that they will not be the cheapest provider you can go with, but they do promise competitive rates and high quality. So what does that look like? Well, in Vancouver, their lowest plan is currently 25 megabytes download speed, which starts at $40. However, for $9 more per month, you can triple that download speed to 75 megabytes. I myself have 10 times that speed with the 750 megabyte plan as I have to do live streams and download and upload large files on the daily. It costs $88 per month and I gotta say it is way more than enough for what I'm doing. In short, Oxio has loads of plans that are tiered for your needs. They don't have the super high speeds that TELUS and Bell offer, capping out at 1 gigabyte download speeds, but they offer more realistic speeds at a fair price point, which means they deserve a very respectable score of 9 out of 10. Hear that? It's time for Bell. While their reach in Western Canada is debatable, they are big players in East and Central Canada. Known for being reliable, Bell provides millions of Canadians with solid high-speed internet. But like I just said, if you are one of the 9 million odd people who live in Western Canada, Bell doesn't seem to have many options of home internet for you. Bell, you get 6.5 out of 10 for coverage, and yeah, we are using half points now. Now, for setting up, unlike TELUS, it was relatively easy to change my address to Ontario and start the setup process for Bell. I could actually see their products listed, which was a massive plus. While I couldn't pull the trigger and officially order a device, seeing as I don't live in Ontario, I got to the last steps of the process and it seems like it is a simple, if not somewhat generic process and relatively straightforward. So, 8 out of 10 I guess. Then we have customer support. And let me tell you, I thought this was gonna go the same way as TELUS. I tried calling them first, and to my surprise, actually got through to someone. 
albeit after I navigated an endless number of prompts to find the right department. I then also tried their web chat service and after two or three bot generated questions, I was connected with a live agent, Bell. Your customer support was very patient and kind though, so to be fair, eight out of 10. Value, however, is where this bell stops ringing. See what I did there? The bundles I was being offered at my fake Ontario address were pretty terrible value. One package coming in at 60 bucks for 50 megabytes a second and 100 bucks for 150 megabytes a second. In the days of 4K streaming, large file sizes being downloaded and uploaded, these kind of speeds are, well, to be honest, kind of surprising. You can opt to ball out for an eight gigabyte package, $140, which is so much overkill, it's baffling that they even offer it, but all in all, the value for at-home internet leaves a lot to be desired. Four out of 10. Another name that you've probably seen more in Western Canada than Central or Eastern is Shaw, or I guess Rogers now? Anyways, it's one of the current favorites for newcomers in Vancouver based on nothing but chatting to randomers at a bar. They do have a much more user-friendly website and based on said website, they seem to have some pretty good coverage overall. So let's go with a solid nine out of 10 here. When it comes to setup though, similar to Bell, I got as far as I could get without physically paying for the service to start and it all seemed pretty straightforward. There was a bit of time when I thought I needed a short technician to come out and check things out, which would have meant I'd had to wait for your home internet for an extra week or so, but overall seems fine. So for consistency sake, let's say eight out of 10 again. Customer support though was where things got a little bit dicey. It was all going so well on their live chat feature on their website, but something happened where I seemed to get caught in the loop of a bot asking me for my first and last name and my street address. Now I have no idea what happened, but it did happen twice. So I closed my browser and opened it up again in the new tab and it seemed to work, but still kind of odd. I couldn't find a phone number to call anyone, but they did offer WhatsApp and SMS messaging support, so I guess that's something. Overall, an odd experience though, so this drops you good folks down to 5 out of 10. Finally, we need to know the value for these Shaw plans, and I am so happy to say that as of recording this video, they're offering 250 megabyte download speed for $84 a month. Still a lot of money, but based on some of the other providers we've looked at, this actually seems like you are getting bang for your buck. You can also pay an extra $10 a month for double the download speed or go ham and spend $130 per month for 1.5 gigabytes of download speed. So while the high end isn't quite as extensive as Bell and Telus, their starting point seems much more suited to the modern day internet user. So let's give them a solid nine out of 10 here. Let's get those scores back up on the screen so we can see where we stand. Up until now, Oxio was our reigning champ with 35 out of 40. But when we add up the Shaw score, we have 31 out of 40. So Oxio is still scraping a win from the Shaw team. Now, before you all start crying party foul in the comment section, I offer you the chance to check out Oxio for yourself. Get a month's free internet, see if you like them, and judge for yourself whether my scoring was accurate or not. You can find out for yourself by clicking the link in the description of this video, along with some links to other articles about internet providers in general across Canada. For me, as convenient as it may seem, Oxio truly did come out on top of this whole thing. I've been using them now for just over two months and I really don't have any complaints about the service at all. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Did I miss any providers that you think should have made the list or did I misrepresent one of the big dogs and you would like to voice your discontent? What I will ask is if you found this video useful, you'll give me a wee thumbs up and a sub to the channel so that we can keep bringing you more of this great content at no cost to you. That's all from me. Bye for now.